The dawns here are quiet is set entirely in Karelia, and yet they never mention the Millennium Falcon. This is an interesting Soviet film about a battalion of women soldiers during World War II. I've wanted to watch this movie for a couple of years, never got around to it until this winter, and I'm glad I watched it. I wasn't sure if I'd be filing this movie under historical oddity, under weird, quirky film from the past, or if it would be genuinely compelling and good, interesting to watch. Um, turns out this movie is pretty good. I would recommend watching it. I don't have a lot to break down for this movie. In truth, this may be a relatively short video because for the most part, what you see is what you get. This is a fairly compelling movie. There are a couple themes here and there that I'll get into, um, but for the most part, I just recommend that you check out The Dons Here Are Quiet. This was originally a book, a short story, I think, or a novella or something um, that has been adapted to the screen three times. This is the first in the 70s, um, and then it was made also into a, a Chinese miniseries in the early or mid-2000s, um, and there's now a Russian uh, film slash miniseries that was made again in 2015. Interesting that this would um, be popular. The story would be known in China as well um, as being quite famous, I think, in former Soviet areas. Um, the, uh, like I said, about women in World War II um, serving in the Soviet army, um, in particular, they are gunners, anti-aircraft gunners, um, who hypothetically wouldn't see direct combat, but in this movie, um, they do. Uh, when we're thinking about women during the Soviet Union, it's very interesting uh, historical debates are ignited. Perhaps there are questions about how great, <laughs> how terrible, what a woman's life would have been like in the Soviet Union. In some ways, uh, people might see women without some of the nice capitalist conveniences, without the makeup um, that we had in the United States. If you're familiar with the Ernst Lubitsch film Ninochka, for instance, a Soviet woman um, sees a fancy hat in a store window, and she's restrained uh, not to give in to the hat. Um, not to the hat, in fact, symbolizes um, some sort of foolish capitalist uh, yearnings or something like that. But at the end of the movie, it turns out that love wins out and she gets the hat. <laughs> um, so we might think that it's a dire existence where, uh, w with a barren femininity. On the other hand, there are some statistics that would suggest that actually, maybe the Soviets were a little bit farther along women, uh, on the path to towards women's liberation than some people might realize. For instance, if you look at how many women were in the workforce, in the labor force, well, much more um, than in the United States as a percentage. Um, people might say, well, hold on a minute, that's not, it's not good to be in the labor force. It just means uh, that they're being coerced into working in factories or something like that. But it is worth noting, interesting kind of women's representation in the Soviet Union um, with women in some ways, as more first-class citizens of the society, and beating out uh, the United States um, in terms of, like I said, labor force participation, um, but also things like military service. So women in the army in the Soviet Union was a thing to some extent. I don't know how common it was. Um, where in the United States, it wasn't. And it also goes to show that uh, there were movies about it, movies offering a very particular perspective on this in specific, uh, movies showing the heroism of women on the front line, celebrating that, um, to some extent, kind of interesting. Um, when you look at the way that the women are actually depicted in this movie, um, there are some subtleties, there are some nuances, there are some lines, for instance, where uh, people talk about how um, they sort of invoke motherhood to some extent and suggest that the, the women are, are a precious asset because they're potential mothers. They shouldn't be out there on the front line. But look at the brave sacrifice they're making. Look at what it's come to, essentially. Um, and this is another one of the asterisks in this complicated question of women in the Soviet Union is that in a lot of places, um, the government had an interest, a vested interest in growing the population, and women were, would um, feel the brunt of that to some extent. So um, in some countries, uh, birth control was not widely accessible and such, almost for strategic reasons um, from the government. And obviously, that paints a very different picture than um, when we say, look at the labor force participa participation rate for women. Hmm. So it's, it's a complicated discussion, but this movie is part of it. That's the point. Um, like I said, the, the women in this movie are pretty strong characters. You get a cross-section. You get a bunch of different people from all over uh, the Soviet Union come together, uh, some of them from nearby villages, some of them from way in the Far East, I think. Um, 
to me, it seems like they do a better job than the average American war movie that pulls together some, you know, group of uh, uh, hodgepodge of Americans. There's the Texan, there'll be the black person, you know, there's kind of the stereotypical uh, American war movie thing uh, full of stock characters. This movie seems to go a little bit of a step further. It's possible that if you're Russian, you think, oh, nope, these are the stereotypes. Um, I'm not sure. At first, I thought it'd be hard to kind of wrap my head around all the different characters, get to know who they were. Um, but by the end of the movie, you actually more or less get things straight, and they end up being good, compelling uh, characters. One, it is interesting to see how they balance uh, the women's roles as soldiers via the women's roles as um, uh, women, I guess. Uh, the, there is some give and take or something. There, is, there are times, for instance, where the base commander, whatever, who is a man, um, will call them out on a regulation, and one of the women will quote the rule book, and it turns out that she knows the regulations even better than him in this kind of reversal and such. But there are also ways in which um, uh, they bend the rules or something like that. They make concessions. Um, they diverge from normal operating procedures or something like that. You should watch the movie if you're curious about how exactly they go along. But without a doubt, the movie is, is very deliberate about all these little details, all these little variations, uh, as kind of walking on a tightrope in some extent to portray a very particular um, image of the Russian woman as um, a good soldier, but as also being sort of jovial, sentimental, um, hearty, um, loving, things like that. Trying to bring those both together um, makes for some interesting trade-offs. In some ways, this movie reminds me of So Proudly We Hail, which is a film I reviewed on this channel um, in 2021, uh, really interesting movie um, about American nurses during World War II in the Philippines, I think. Um, now, I should point out that the best the U.S. could do in World War II um, in terms of film and reality was have women nurses. Um, the Don Sierra Quiet is about women who are actually on the front lines, soldiers um, and such. Uh, but the... So Proudly We Hail, very interesting movie that makes a lot of similar trade-offs and such that tries to celebrate women for being in the forces, but also, um, to some extent, uh, contends that it's a tragedy that such a thing is going on, that tries to portray these soldiers as being very strong, but also feminine um, at the same time. Not to say that there's any contradiction there, but when you're, when it's, you know, this movie's quite old. Um, uh, and so, at a time, uh, finding those things uh, in together in the mainstream media wouldn't have been so common. Okay. Don's here, the, the, the Don's here are quiet, um, is in some ways playing very similar games, but in fact, in some ways, I think it has a much easier time of it because rather than trying to reconcile American capitalist femininity with soldierdom, the two things being really quite far apart, um, it's potential that the Russian egalitarian femininity of the Soviet Union is actually much more closely aligned with being a soldier. Um, and so those things, uh, yeah, those things come together much more easily. That's one of the interesting things about the movie, in my opinion. Okay. I think you maybe get some of the idea. Worth watching to see how, how the, the line is drawn. This movie is in, is in two halves. Oh, I should say also that for all the talk about um, strong characters and such, um, there is also one scene, uh, one sort of surprising scene where the women are shown in the bathhouse and there's a lot of nudity in this. And so for the most part, the film sort of uh, sidesteps uh, blatant sexualization of its characters. It shows them as, um, you know, actual people and such. Uh, it does slip in one <laughs> potentially sort of um, exploitative scene, which I didn't really expect. Um, this movie is, is in two halves. Um, the first half mainly takes place at this camp. Um, the movie starts out almost as a comedy. The base commander person uh, gets fed up with some of the male soldiers, and he asks... I, he, he asks uh, his superior to get to bring him some soldiers who won't uh, drink and won't mess around with the local women. And what he gets is a battalion of women. And when they show up at first, he's a bit surprised. It's a little bit of a comedy. Like I said, there are jokes throughout. Relatively early on, though, there's one sort of um, uh, 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 war action thing happens, uh, <laughs> battle or something like that, where some, some airplanes fly over and the anti-aircraft gunners have to go to work. And the film switches gears pretty quickly, becomes very serious pretty quickly. Um, and that was the moment where, for me, it switched from being, oh, this might be interesting historical oddity with some sort of 
old Soviet jokes that are kind of funny, but also some that don't really make any sense uh, or that just seem quite goofy. Um, it switches in this first incident to being a pretty compelling movie, I thought. Um, we don't get a lot more action throughout the first half, but we get to see more of the women living uh, together. We get to learn some about them. It's still a little bit hard to tell who is who, um, but the first half is, is, is all right. The second half is where the movie really shifts gears, becomes a lot more intense, and in some ways a lot more compelling. I won't tell you what happens in the second half, but there is some direct combat. So this film is mostly in black and white, 90%. Um, there are some flashbacks. Um, many of the women, you see flashbacks uh, to their time before joining the army, and these are really interestingly staged. They're not sort of realistic, they're filmed almost as like dream sequences or something. They're filmed on sets, on sound stages mostly. It's clear that they are with some very interesting staging, very sparse sets, maybe a dinner table and some people sitting around the dinner table, but no house or something like that, or some trees, but just an endless foggy background and such. This is in color. You also get some interesting music in these scenes. The music overall in this movie is really good. And in particular, um, these, these flashbacks have, I think, really, really great music. Um, this kind of Soviet utopianism is interesting. It lends a very strong sentimental feel to the movies with the women reminiscing about what their lives were prior to the horrible war and such. It maybe goes a step too far at some point. I mean, most of these scenes could be cut out of the movie and nothing would change um, at all. Some of them seem sort of similar, repetitive. Like I said, one of the flaws of this movie is that it's a bit melodramatic. Another one is that it's a bit too long and maybe you could have killed two birds with one stone by just removing all these things and maybe you just make the whole movie in color anyway. Um, I don't know. Uh, but these scenes are at least interesting. They have uh, unexpected stylistic choices in them. The, uh, um, right, there's, there's one other scene uh, or set of scenes that are in color, which is some scenes showing um, people in the present day, as in the 70s, um, sort of exploring the same region of Karelia and um, contemplating the historical uh, events and such and, and uh, uh, contemplating the, the heritage, the legacy of the land. This is an interesting uh, little concept that I've seen in other Soviet films before. For instance, the Sergei Bondarchuk version of War and Peace, which is an insane movie that you should definitely watch, a masterpiece without a doubt. That movie, I think, starts out or ends off, I don't really remember which one, maybe it ends with showing um, some of the hills where a battle has been fought, I forget which one. Um, it shows how that is now you know, it transitions from, from some empty historical hills over to showing like a highway. Um, uh, it, it pans over to a highway from the helicopter shot and you see, oh, all this, this place where all this turmoil was, all this suffering, all the drama, all the historical tension and such is also this place where we now live and where we pass through and where we drive through, right? Connecting the uh, present with the past in a very meaningful way. Uh, I've seen this in other Soviet movies. I've seen this also, if you know the movie Marquita Lazarova, it does this at the end. It's kind of an interesting maneuver. They do this here um, as well to kind of make the turmoil and the drama concrete in some ways to show how some, something about the legacy, the heritage, the roots. I think you get the idea. Like I said, this, this film has a sentimental aspect to it without a doubt. One other note on the style is that in a few places I was reminded a little bit of Sergio Leone's films in some of the framing. Sergio Leone would have been sort of top of people's minds at the time. Um, just a few details of how things are shot um, to some extent. This is overall, I think, a really ambitious movie that is for the most part pretty well carried out. Um, it is not simply a little war film about one battle. It's also not a, you know, it starts out kind of as a comedy, but it, 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 it moves a long way past just like, oh, look, they're women, <laughs> right? Into being really fairly compelling portrait um, of this time in the war. The combat scenes in the movie are pretty intense. Um, and there's a sentimental tinge. There are strong characters. There are some, uh, some compelling personal stories um, in this film. So overall, the dons here are quiet. I was actually pleasantly surprised by how good this movie was. Um, like I said, it's part of an interesting conversation about women of the Soviet Union. It is interesting to see how this film reconciles patriotism with 
the sorrows and the tragedies of war. And this film has some interesting stylistic choices, particularly in the flashbacks. It's got great music, um, and those things combine really to make a pretty decent movie. So that's the Dons here are quiet.